Hello, everyone. Welcome to Webinar Wednesday. My name is Rhea Stark. I'm the Digital Engagement Manager here at TLC. And today we have a full panel of guests here to talk about whether or not an ILS migration can really be easy. So you'll hear from some staff from our headquarters implementation team, as well as some customers who just recently made the switch to TLC. But before I pass it off, I do have just a few housekeeping items to cover. So first, all of our webinars are recorded, yes, including this one, and you can watch the replay starting tomorrow at tlcdelivers.com slash webinars. You will also receive an email notification letting you know that that is made available. Uh, the second thing, if you are joining us live today, hello, please uh, answer or please ask any questions in the questions panel and we will answer them at the end of the session. Um, so that's available for you. And since we do have a number of panelists today, if you have a specific question for a specific person, if you could please try to indicate that as well um, as you ask those. And then the third thing to mention before you log out, please go ahead and download those brochures we have available for you. Um, we have one talking about our data services, which goes hand in hand with migrations. So be sure to download that before you log out today. All right, so today's discussion is going to be facilitated by Melissa Powell. She's our customer success manager on our headquarters side for library.solution. And Melissa, you have a full panel. I'm going to let you introduce everybody, and I'll be back at the end to help answer those questions. Thank you, Rhea. Uh, we do have a full panel because there's a lot of things involved with this, you know. Um, so thank you for joining us for this webinar. I'm Melissa Powell, library.solution customer success manager, and with me is Sherry Banks. Director of Operations at TLC HQ and a very experienced leader of the implementation team, and Amber Downs, who, like myself, is a former TLC customer and librarian and now a current project manager for library.solution implementations. We also have two of uh, with us two of our most recent new customers, Sean Klee, who his camera does not work, so he is not on camera right now. The Adult Services and Technical Services Librarian at Grand Island Public Library in Grand Island, Nebraska. And Kim Rogers, our, the lead librarian at New Haven Public Schools in New Haven, Connecticut, which is apparently home to world famous pizza. You can take that up with her later. <laughs> As a librarian myself, I know the trepidation of moving to new software. Oops. It has only gotten more complicated over the years with third parties, sys, NSIP, SIP, RFID, self checks, mobile devices, et cetera. I, worked, I have worked with several migration projects as a consultant on the library side, and I can tell you it was different with every migration project. And even though most were happy with getting new software, there were a lot of trepidation on the actual implementation of that new software. Um, when I was briefly a sales consultant for TLC, there were many libraries that were anxious to leave their current vendor. And even though they could afford it, they let the thought of all the work involved in actually doing it from migrating data to training to the patrons was all just too overwhelming to think about, so they stayed. Today, we're here to talk about what is actually involved, bust some myths, and give you a chance to hear from some librarians that recently made the move. The purpose of this webinar is not to sell you on TLC implementations, but to familiarize you with the process and to share advice and experience from folks on both sides of the table. Getting new software should not be a hassle. It does take time, however. There are ways to get through a large project without losing your mind. So we'll begin with how we approach this on the vendor side of things. So Sherry, can you give us a little history on how TLC has developed this implementation process? Absolutely. <clears throat> Thank you, Melissa. So I'm Sherry Banks. I am Director of Operations at Headquarters. And I'm, as Melissa said, I've been working with uh, implementation for TLC for a very long time. Uh, TLC has been perfecting the implementation of library.solutions since the 1990s. There's a strong focus on implementation process improvement. The implementation team has numerous checklists to ensure that all tasks are completed and those checklists grow and change at the completion of every project because there's always something new to learn. The team that implements library.solution has been part of every single implementation that's in the field today. That's nearly 30 years of implementation handled by a team with over 100 years of combined implementation experience. And that's just library.solution. That doesn't include all of the other implementations that we've done. 
The data migration is key to the success of the project and usually the part that's the biggest concern for new customers. But let me reassure you that we pay careful attention to the data that we receive. During a data migration, TLC ensures all numbers match when you deliver records to us and we return them to you. We, carefully, we work carefully to ensure that the elements provided in the data are mapped into the proper field in library.solution. Because as you know, from vendor to vendor, they might give fields a different name and even maybe a different use. So that's part of what we do during the implementation is make sure that we feel things properly. Also during the implementation, we work closely with your staff to identify areas where data cleanup can be done broadly through customer programming. We also have a standard package of utilities that we run against the data to identify records that need minor tweaks to get them ready for the library.solution database. For example, if you have non-filing indicators that are not set properly, we have a process that will go through and apply those indicators to all the affected records. We ask a library for their bibliographic data at least twice, usually twice, uh, once for analysis, at which time you can continue to circulate, catalog, do all your normal activities without interruption. And then later in the process, we ask for another copy of the bibliographic file, and we use that to build the actual library.solution database. We ask for the borrower or student data and the transaction data normally three times, once for analysis, and then once in the middle of the project for a test migration, and then once for the final migration, which is on day one of the training, or basically as it concludes on day one. Uh, included in the migration from your legacy system to library.solution is the conversion of your library's MARC records to RDA. This process alone saves your library hundreds, maybe even thousands of hours of time spent editing bibliographic records. You can learn more about the RDA conversion on our website under the TLC Data Services link, where you're going to find a great illustration of a before and after view of the project or the uh, public access catalog after the RDA ification, as we call it, has been applied. So I hope you can tell we give a lot of attention to the migration of your library's data into library.solution, and that's what makes TLC unique. We aren't just your vendor, we are your partner. Thank you, Sherry. It does sound yeah. like the, you guys do a lot of the heavy lifting, and we don't only uh, migrate the data, but we actually clean it up a bit. So yes, what's we do. the impetus behind that? Well, um, a lot of it is because we want to improve the discoverability in the pack. So we want to make sure that collections are properly identified, um, different uh, elements of the uh, item that you have in hand are parsed properly so that availability shows, uh, just to just improve the entire experience that your, that your borrowers have at the library. That's great. Thank you. As a librarian, that's much appreciated, I can tell you. <laughs> Absolutely. So, Amber, um, as a project manager, can you give us an overview of what a new customer can expect when they migrate to TLC library.solution? Totally. So, yes, um, like Melissa said, I am the project manager for the library.solution implementation team. So, once, you know, the ink has been signed, the contract has been put together, I actually meet with your sales representatives um, and my team meet with them to go over the sale, talk about what you've purchased, what you need, um, any concerns that you have already brought to your salesperson, they will forward on to me so that we can make sure that we are fully prepared um, once we start talking to you about what your needs are going to be. Once I've got that information from them, I start to put together our information and our process and then I actually contact you to schedule a kickoff call. A kickoff call is just that. It's a time for us to get together with you as well as any other members of the team from your library, which it could be just one person or it could be, you know, 10 or 20 people. It depends on the size of your library or library system. Um, it always depends on what, you know, your needs are, as well as my team, which will include me. We have a uh, trainer that works with you throughout the entire process um, and goes through step by step, both in the um, implementation process as well as when we go live, we'll have a week of training with them as well. And you'll have a uh, implementation specialist assigned to your 
project just to work with your data um, and go through your data both before, during, and after this process. Um, just like Sherry had mentioned, with those data polls, we'll be the one going through that with a fine-tooth comb to make sure everything is ready to go um, to give you the best library.solution database once we go live. Um, so then once we've had that kickoff call, we'll work, um, we'll pull some, we'll have you pull the data. And if the idea of even pulling data is confusing for you, um, we have team members that are implementation specialists will give you that information, explain to you how to use FTP uh, and make sure that you have all those tools in your hands. Um, and of course, if you're an expert at that, it's even better. But we want to make sure that even if you aren't, you know, you're confused by a lot of these words and terms that we can still work with you and, you know, guide you through this process, depending on your level of knowledge on the topic. Um, so once we get going, we will um, host weekly meetings. Um, and that gives you, your team and my team a chance to meet together to go over the next steps in the implementation process, go over the next things that we're reviewing. Maybe we're gonna talk about your borrowers one week, maybe another week we'll talk about some of your policies, what you want your catalog to look like. Um, so we bite it up, break it up into those nice bite-sized chunks so that you're not sitting there with all of this information and questions thrown at you at once. Gives you a chance even to invite the um, key players of your library who wanna help out into individual meetings as well. Um, and my team will be at those meetings too. If you have any questions or maybe some concerns have come up on your side, we can answer those questions there for you. Um, we do use Basecamp as a project management tool. Um, and that is just a website where we post our meeting minutes and our meeting agendas so that you can um, see where we're at, see what's going on. Uh, maybe a member of your team was unable to attend one of the meetings. They can still find all of that information there. It's like a little hub for the project. We also have another checklist in there. I know Sherry mentioned how we have lots of checklists. We have a checklist in there, which gives you the opportunity to, um, gives my team the opportunity to mark off where we are so that we all see how things are going if we're up to date with everything. Um, you guys don't get to see that one, but my team uses that as a way to just make sure we're all on the same page together. Um, my team actually also meets before your meeting and we kind of sit down and review your project and see if there's anything that we need to make sure come up at the next meeting. Um, so that we can, again, be all on the same page and work together. Um, uh, as we get closer, like Sherry had mentioned, as we get closer, we'll do like a test migration, make sure everything looks good and smooth. Um, and the goal is that when it comes time to do go live, we know exactly what to expect and exactly how things are going to look. So go live week is when it all comes together. Um, so most libraries do close on the Monday of that week, so all staff can attend the circulation training. This means that everybody will know how to check items in, check items out, and how to use our public access catalog. Um, so this is a great opportunity for everyone to kind of sit down together and do that. Right now we're offering a virtual training, which means staff members can log in from anywhere to attend, which actually has a lot of added benefit as well. Monday night is when the final migration happens. The following morning, we'll meet with you before the library opens to QC all the borrower accounts and make sure everything is 100% perfect. Um, after that, we'll get the approval um, and then we'll be good to go and your staff have already been trained, so they'll be ready to start using library that solution that morning. The rest of that day will be dedicated to go live assistance, which again is still offered through that virtual platform. Um, and then we can answer any questions that come up. Um, and this actually has been working really well virtually, and I'm really enjoying how you have access to the entire TLC staff. And then maybe your staff members can even have um, the meeting open, you know, over at the circulation desk area and can see what's going on and ask questions directly to us on our team as well as our um, product managers as well, and they can jump in and answer any questions that are needed. So that's been working really well. Um, I lost my spot in my notes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the rest of that week is actually dedicated to additional training on other LS modules, including admin, reports, pack, and cataloging. Um, and cataloging day is actually really cool. Um, during the morning on cataloging day, we review the cataloging module, um, you know, teach you how to do it, show you everything you need to know, and then in the afternoon, we provide hands-on training. So that means your catalogers can sit down, they can share their screen, and then we can talk them through step-by-step -step cataloging, which is a great way to make sure we all really know what we're doing and we're on the same page. So that's been really great. Uh, and during all of these training sessions, like I mentioned, my entire team will be sitting in as well. So if you know, we're doing cataloging training and someone else has a problem at the CERC desk, we can jump in and assist them as well. Um, our team sets aside that entire week to be there for you and to ensure your go live is as smooth and painless as possible. 
once you're alive, we'll still continue to meet with you for a couple of weeks um, to make sure that you have all the answers that you need, all the bugs are taken care of, everything is going smoothly. And then once we feel comfortable that things are going good, we'll actually transition you to support and our customer success specialist, Melissa Powell, and she'll kind of sit with you for the next six months to a year, uh, meeting with you monthly or uh, quarterly, however you guys need to make sure that you really are happy with the product and have all the information that you need. Thank you, Amber. It really sounds like in a way, I know being on site is really great, but having that virtual element, even if we are on site, means that you've got access to everybody on in the entire uh, building, basically, that exactly. even though they're not in the building. Exactly. So we've really made it, we've really taken that virtual element and gone, gone to town with it. I, I didn't even realize you guys did that. That's awesome. It's working um, very well. Okay. <laughs> so basically, you can see it's we try to make it as simple as possible, and then it's all about the details. So now that you have an idea of what the um, what it's like on the vendor side and what we do, um, I'm going to move to the uh, our newest customers and get an idea of what it's like on their side. Uh, first off, though, I want to remind people: if you do have questions, get those questions in um, because they are here for you. All right, so Kim, <laughs> can you address what your concerns were once you made that decision to change vendors, especially since you did implement your software in the middle of a school year? <laughs> yeah, so my biggest fear was, you know, will all my librarians hate me in the district? Because <laughs> this is a big process and, and I was concerned um, that fear of what if it all goes wrong, but we were so, um, frustrated where we were uh and and we are also dealing with as everybody else was covid um and not being able to get the things done that we need to get done those schools who are uh dealing with covid and technology many librarians were dealing with that too so our librarians level was of frustration was very very high and you know the other thing is people don't really like change so they're like they already knew how to do what they were doing and that would mean they'd have to learn something possibly a little different and something that they might be uncomfortable with um but we went through the process which was a very detailed process we had a, a small team that worked um and that bite by bite piece that that uh, amber talked about was very true so it wasn't overwhelming to to transfer um and it was a it's kind of like when you do your spring cleaning we really have really good clean records now you know like when you tear everything out of the closet and then you're like i'm only putting back the stuff i really need we really got some some um good house cleaning done with that too and that feels really good and we needed some really feeling good things so we were able to you know get some of that and and it we felt it was a good uh, change for the good for us. Because um, you guys were very flexible um, with answering our questions and that whole process step by step. We never felt like we were floundering, which is really important. Yeah, I like the fact that you said that it gave you guys something positive during COVID and all of that. So turn that around. Um, Sean, same question for you. What concerns did you guys have um, coming into this, your staff and, and your, li your library? Um, well, not only were we switching our system, we were actually part of a shared system beforehand. So it was not only migrating, but it was kind of untangling all of our own um, data from the consortium and uh, making sure we were only transferring what we had um, and that we were taking just our things along with us. So we had to migrate but we also kind of had to wrap up with the group that we were a part of as well so um we had both ends to work with and um and then we also um, just with the way the timing fell um our migration meetings were in the middle of summer reading so we are <laughs> very busy you know as a public reading a public library during summer reading and we migrated um the week after summer reading and <laughs> so we, we also migrated during a busy time. So we had um, staff that were busy doing programs and helping kids keep track of their minutes and everything that goes along with summer and then also getting ready for this big change. 
Wow. Okay. Yeah. I, that's incredible. I had no idea. Um, great. So to follow up on that, Sean, what did you learn um, during the migration that you weren't expecting, especially after your initial concerns of untangling and all of that? Um, well, we went from an open source system. So um, I was concerned about um, how our data was going to translate into your system because our data was stored all over all over the place and in our old system so it was um just trying to make sure we were pulling everything you needed and as sherry and amber mentioned um, your team is so great with giving you the checklists of this is what i need and what field is it is is it in in your system it's going to be in this field in this system and give us examples and screenshots and it really made the whole process go a lot smoother great Okay, so um, that's right, I was going to change this. So what did you learn? Um, so being able to ask a lot of questions and having those checklists. So anybody who's going to be migrating, you would highly recommend checklists. <laughs> okay. Um, so Kim, what did you learn during the migration process that was really surprising, considering your initial concern with your staff and not wanting change and, and all of that? Um. We learned what it's like to be uh, responded to, which is <laughs> really kind of nice um, because those checklists can sometimes, you know, make people nervous. But if you had any question on the checklist, like, you know, I don't know what this is about or I don't know what that is about. They were really able to respond to you quickly and very concisely. And that was, um, you know, pleasantly surprising um, because. I was really the lead on it and it was it's the you know first big leading thing that i've done so uh to be able to get those really concise answers and not have anybody be frustrated with me at all um that was really great and this and the, i was surprised how smooth even though we kicked off our um our opening of our libraries in october which is kind of late for schools considering we started august 31st so that was a little huh um, once we started, the librarians were bing, bing, bing. Like I was very pleased at how fast they were able to pick up on the, the intuitiveness of the, of the system that we were now using. Great. So um, Sean, to go back to that, what you'd learned and you were extracting yourself from the system and putting all the data in. So how was it when, we, when you got to that point of um, being able to see what it was going to look like prior to the, um, actual go live were you able to see what that looked like uh yeah we were able to see what it looked like and um our data specialist was great she would give me lists of things like these things look like they have mistakes in them or these have um critical errors in them that you need to fix or um, because we were in a consortium i was able to give her our barcode ranges and so she was able to say well these don't match the barcode ranges you gave me can you make sure they're actually your items um so it was just the whole process of working through all that and having answers and like kim said having the really good customer service and getting answers to questions right away and clear concise answers was great well that's great all right thank you um Hey, so Kim, I'm going to have you put you on the spot. You've got school librarians and they're going to say, well, what advice do you have for me? What would make, you know, a migration for me easier? Well, I feel like we were really well advised. I mean, again, kind of like that messy closet. Um, you know, it's a good time to do a good weeding and get rid of stuff before it comes over and to look at the things that you have already. Um, I think that was really good advice. And then uh, we were able to do an inventory, which we had not been able to do. You know, we have um, 26 librarians trying to get, library, you know, in, you know, 40 libraries uh, inventory. So that cleaning up process um, was, was important. And, uh, and then getting together for that kickoff which is not easy at a school level. You have to pull every librarian and the principals are like, what, they're my substitute, which happens with COVID. Um, 
that was really, uh, really important to to all come together for that training because then everybody's kind of on the same page and we all kind of are, are working through it together. Okay, so yeah, being able to get everybody together and make that little sacrifice to then make things work more smoothly. That's that's a really good one because I know it's a little tough in school sometimes to get your principals to agree with that. <laughs> so... <laughs> Okay, um, what other advice would you have if somebody was looking, thinking, okay, maybe we'll make the change? What kind of questions do you advise that they ask of a vendor they're thinking of going to? I mean, I think, uh, you know, knowing the vendor's process is really important and and seeing, like, how they're going to go through that step by step. If, if the, To have an organized plan and make sure that that vendor that they're going to has a really organized plan. Um, to get from point A to point B, uh, that that is critical because without a good plan, you know, us teachers we're all about planning, and so without a good plan, you're planning to fail. So that that to me would be what is your process, and it should be a pretty detailed process, you know. And there's so many little threads that are involved, like. What is your process for your patrons, you know, what students and teachers and staff in this in the school system? And what is your process in regards to, you know, the regular books and the ebooks? And, you know, we're a K-12 district. So how are we managing our, you know, little things like overdue notices for K-5 students is very different for overdue notices for six through 12 students with privacy and those other things. So there's so many there's, you should really think about what is your plan to get you from point A to point B. That's a great, thank you. Thank you very much, Kim. Okay, um, I'm gonna kind of stray a little bit about from the advice just because one of the big reasons we asked Sean um, to join us is that um, Grand Island went all out um, when they, even before they migrated. And I want Sean to talk a little bit about what they did. <laughs> Uh, well, first of all, I'll say none of that, none of what you see on the screen was my idea. We have a great, great gal that does social media and marketing and um, very talented staff that um, can make pretty much anything like the St. Patrick's Day hat you see on Scout. Um, but um, not only was our staff frustrated with our old system, our patrons really were too. So when we, after we had made the decision to switch and we had the date that we were moving on August 9th, we really started promoting that we have new, better things on the horizon for our catalog, for your account. And um, we really did a big social media push, as you can see. Um, we did little teasers with Scout, like searching the catalog. Um, you can see a couple pictures of that. And then right after we launched, we were able to get some plush Scouts from marketing, from Maria's team. And um, some of our children's staff set up a little scout scavenger hunt around the library with little clues. Um, you had to go find all the different places scout was hiding in the library. And then we gave away scouts um, at the end of the promotion. And um, we got more scouts. So we're doing a lucky <laughs> scout hunt uh, at the beginning of this month for St. Patrick's Day. We have more clues and more scouts to give away. And we had one little boy that won this morning and he was so super excited to win, to pick up his scout. I was up at the front desk when he claimed it and he really loved it. So um, just the marketing tools that we were able to tap into with your team to promote it. Um, we got the meet scout poster to hang up in the children's section. And we had posters that we could hang up in adults and by the catalogs and yeah, it was, it was great to be able to have something positive for our patrons. Yeah, that's great. And to be able to set that branding to where now, you know, everybody knows Scout, mm -hmm. even though he's our, our kids catalog uh, mascot, everybody loves him. I mean, one of the first things you do when you start working for TLC is ask for your Scout. So, because <laughs> <laughs> he's pretty well known. No, I'm it's very impressed in that you're continuing it. And I have to say, I noticed this morning, uh, we had a library, another library that grabbed the idea and they're doing oh, a lot Scout. <laughs> yeah. So um, new customers influencing our others. Um, so thank you very much, you guys. This has been really um, enlightening. 
and I hope enlightening for our, our customers as well. Does anybody have any parting comments you'd like to make before I give it over to Rhea? Nope. Okay. Hey everybody, thank you so much. Um, those were great stories. And um, Sean, we love being able to send the scouts over to you and see what you're doing with them. When I saw the pictures for the um, for the hat, I was like, how do I get one for my scout dog? Cause that's too cute. Um, and uh, Kim, when you're talking about the metaphor for basically cleaning house, that, that's one of the things we like to mention as well. It's like, you know, when you're when you're signing to move systems, it's really like deciding to, to move your whole house. Like you have to go through every single room and, you know, not only pack and label everything, but then you have to go back through and clean it all up. And it's it's a process. So ho hopefully with all those checklists and everything that everyone's heard today, um, it it is a little bit easier and maybe not so intimidating. Um, oh, I do have a couple of questions that have come in so far. Um, to give everyone a chance to ask more questions, I'm going to um, post a couple of polls for you all. So as you're typing them up, um, go ahead and check out our screen. Um, first, we want to know, is your library currently considering an ILS migration? And if you are, what part of the process are you in for that? So are maybe you're migrating to a new system right now, or maybe you're just looking at vendors, thinking about it and making that decision. Um, possibly starting to think about it. Maybe this is the, um, the the sign you needed to say, hey, you know what, maybe we should consider purchasing that new house, so to speak. Um, have you just migrated? Or maybe you're not thinking about it this time, but wanted to stop by the webinar anyway and support our team, which we very much appreciate. So go ahead and uh, get those answered. And I'll also mention our um, our handouts that we have available as well. Um, one of them uses that same house metaphor for the um, for the process to clean up data, where you start with metadata coming from all sorts of different places, and it goes through that pre rinse scrub, purify process, and then you end up with kind of a brand new looking house um, as a metaphor for data. So be sure to download that and take a look just to get a, another idea. And while that poll is finishing up, let's uh, see. Oh, good, we've got about a third are migrating now, another third are looking at vendors, and um, ooh, a few have already migrated. Cool, we always like to get that kind of information. Um, my next poll is kind of a general question for everybody. If you wanted to get more information from TLC um, about migration services, if you are in one of those two thirds that's in the process of um, considering a migration or looking at new vendors, go ahead and hit that yes, please contact me button. We'll be happy to reach out and provide additional details from what you've heard from this webinar. So we'll leave that up on the screen for just a moment. Um, the other couple of handouts we've added as well are the press releases from Grand Island and New Haven when they both went live. So if you're looking for more information, wanted to read those, those are also available. All right, I've given it enough time. We've gotten a few more questions in. I'm gonna start, um, start asking those and then that poll question will pop off the screen once we've gotten a few more folks to answer. So for the first question I'm going to pass to Amber. This came in when you were giving your presentation. Uh, would this process be the same if we were joining another library that already has TLC? So what's the process if someone's considering joining a system that is already using our services? Uh, it would probably be very similar. I'm going to actually let Sherry answer that a little bit more. Um, but we'll still, yeah. we'll still need to go through your data. Right. All of the uh, all of the data implementation portions of the process would still apply. The difference would be that instead of building a database, we would schedule a time to merge your records in. And the same thing with borrowers and transactions. Instead of uh, we would have to do the test on a test database and then we would set aside some time to do the go live with the current user of library.solution to get everything added in but for the most part the bulk of the process would be the same yes great thank you sherry um this next one i'm going to pass to you as well so what is the timeline for the migration process and specifically between each of those data polls that you mentioned since there's multiple times we're we're looking at the data 
So generally speaking, it depends on uh, the customer's schedule and expectations, maybe when their system is expiring or their support is expiring on the current system. But we generally need about 10 to 12 weeks to do a full implementation once we receive usable data. That very first group of data can be supplied pretty much at any time because the clock doesn't really start ticking until we get that group of data. So um, as fast as the library wants to move, we're ready to go. But we would get that first group of data and there would be no restrictions whatsoever because it's really just a snapshot in time. The data is delivered to us and we spend several weeks um, analyzing it, talking to you about the data, getting everything set up, and basically what we're doing at that point is cooking, a getting a recipe ready so that we can, at the end, deliver the system that you want. And the time frame from that very first delivery until we need that second group is about six weeks. Again, it depends on the customer and their expectations, but about six weeks. And then when we get that final bibliographic data, until go live is about four to five weeks um, and the test migration happens about that same time but again the test migration is a snapshot in time you just send us some data you continue uh, operating business as usual the purpose of the test migration is to confirm that all of the custom programming that we've spent several weeks preparing actually translates and loads the data as everyone expects. So we would spend time going over borrower records, transactions, the hold shelf, um, borrower comments, all those things. And so the point of that is to get you to send us the data. We go through that process. We tweak anything that needs to be done so that when we actually run the final migration, it's mostly just pushing a button and making sure everything goes exactly as expected. And that actually happens at the end of training on day one. So when your instructor is done, they let us know we're done training for the day and everyone goes home and puts their feet up and takes a deep breath and we're still here uh, migrating that data and getting it ready for you. And we send you a detailed report that night so that the next morning when you come in and we review it as a team, everybody has all the information that they need to go through the uh, migration results and consider the system ready to go live. Perfect. Thank you, Sherry. That that yeah. was great. And I, I love the additional metaphor of um, of the recipe. It's it's kind of a homey process of um, migrating all this data and everything. Absolutely. So love that. Um, I do have one more question. Um, Amber, you were talking about training. Um, this question is asking whether or not that happens in during the live system. Since you said it, you you train first and then they're all ready to go on day one with um, with the system. So are they in a live system when they're getting trained? What does that process look like? So on on day one, we're gonna have like a fly just flew by. <laughs> um, we'll be working with your uh, information and we will have um, your. Uh, collection will be in there. We'll have your items. We won't have your borrower. Your borrowers will have been added and your um, transactions will be added until that night. So for, you know, your circulation training on that day one, it won't have everything. Um, however, once we go further on, there will be, you know, we're active, everything is live and is ready to go. Um, for most of that training, we do kind of do it as a, we'll show you what's happening and you can kind of follow along and see what's going on um, and then practice on your own. Um, and then, of course, when you're in the cataloging training day, you know, we're, we do it, we explain it all, and then we have you just jump in um, with, you know, your active software, your collections, your items, and working on cataloging and adding additional items. Perfect. So they are really using their data, and it's going to look yes. like what it's going to look like when they do go live. Mm -hmm. um, all right, my next question, I think this might be my last question. I haven't seen any come in um, just yet. I'll keep an eye out. But this one's for, I guess, um, actually, Melissa, I'll bring you back on as well. I think you can help address this. So the question is, um, how long do we stay with the implementation team before moving to traditional supports? And she mentioned maybe working with the customer success manager for that six months to a year. So what does that uh, tra transition process look like? Well, that transition process is also, we, we do everything uh, based on the customer. Um, if we feel like the customer, there's a few things we still need that implementation needs to still be involved with, the team will determine and say, let's stick with, you know, the entire um, implementation team for a little bit longer. Other times it's like, wow, ready to go and transfer over usually within a month or less. 
And then um, we have a meeting with everybody. So like when Kim came in and we were having our meeting, it was the implementation folks, me, Jen Watson, who is the director of client services and Kim. And we sat there and said, okay, what do you want? And then we set up the meetings the way the customer wants them, the way, you know, how often you want to have them. So again, um, we don't like to do hard fast dates because we really like to work with the customer and their schedule, their comfort with the system and their needs at the time, actually. And in fact, quite often we'll have members of the implementation team in those initial meetings um, just to make sure there's if there are some things that come up. And then also all of us follow the tickets on every um, new customer, both implementation and uh, the customer success and client services, director of client services all follow every ticket. So we see every ticket that Kim and Sean put in. <laughs> Perfect, um, we did get one last. Okay. Oh, sorry. What Go well, ahead, I was going to say the question that you were asking about the training, um, that'd be a great one for our, our other panelists to say what their experience with the training was and how it worked for them. If, you know, a live database. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Kim, would you like to speak to that first? Sure. The, the training went smooth. It was virtual and I was worried about it being virtual and I was hoping to get all my people in one room. And then the district said, no, nope, you know, the numbers are too high for COVID. So everybody had to stay in their libraries and do it kind of on their own. And um, but it was it was our system. It was our our things that we were looking at and they were modeling for us um, using one of our schools um virtually and and the cataloging part of it it was you know we told the the lms's in advance bring you know bring a little stack of books that you know have to be cataloged because we had been out of the building so long there was lots of you know things hanging around that needed to be done and they did they brought their stack of books and they got to practice and they you know um they had the the guest person that one of the LMSs volunteered to be like, I'll show you. And she went step by step and showed good, you know, gradual release method that was used for us, which is a, a good teaching method that we know as educators. Yeah, definitely. Being able to learn it hands on and, and understand it really, really makes a difference when you have to do it live on your own. Um, Sean, would you like to go ahead and take that question as well? How is training for your library system? Sure, training was great. Um, we didn't really have training with our previous system, so um, we had a, a lot of training. <laughs> um, and yeah, so the first day staff were all here kind of spread out throughout the building at their workstations on the virtual training, the virtual circulation training. And then having the go live assistance the next day really helped. Um, I worked at the circulation desk the whole day that we had that go live the next day that Tuesday and just being able to have the uh, Zoom call open on one of the computers and being able to hop on and talk to Sherry or our trainer, Samantha, or anyone else that we needed to anytime we needed was great because we, I could just get on, I could call in to the number on the phone and just ask them. And if they needed to, they could show me on the screen. And it was, it was really great support. That's good. And I also have a follow up question uh, for you, Sean, that, that came in as well. Sure. I'll put you on the spot a little bit for um, coming from an open source software, mm -hmm. moving to TLC as an enterprise mm -hmm. system. Um, can you maybe speak to some of the differences that you experienced in terms of like the migration process? Um, were you part of the original um, migration into open source? I guess I should start um, there. <laughs> I was not. Um, our library and consortium had been on that system for um, a little more than 10 years. I've only been with the Grand Island for five this mm -hmm. July, so only four last year when we worked on it. Um, so we had to, I had to do the data polls myself, um, and it being open source, it's all always done with SQL. Um, so luckily, I was able to get some help from our city IT department or city department. Um, the GIS coder knows SQL backwards and forwards and I knew where all the data was stored and didn't know how to get to it. He knew how to get to it but didn't know where it was stored so we were able to work together and um, write some reports to get it pulled out and in a format that TLC could use to migrate. 
Yeah, definitely. And then once uh, working with TLC from that mm-hmm. front, um, having that data, how did that go? Uh, for the most part, it was it was pretty good. There was um, very few records um, that had any errors. And when we migrated, I think there was maybe only like 10 or 12 holds that didn't transfer over, but we were able to figure them out real easy and get them back on hold. So um, it was a pretty smooth process. Yeah, that's that's so great to hear. Um, Thank you all for being able to present today. Um, I'm not seeing any more questions, so I'm going to jump to the next slide and talk about our next webinar. Um, And then I'll come back and give you all a chance to give any final thoughts if you'd like to. Um, But our next webinar is going to be at the end of the month. We'll be talking about Novel Branch, specifically in um, a school environment. So that's our mini library solution. Uh, So tune back in. Keep an eye on that website. That's tlcdelivers.com slash webinars. That's also the place where today's recording will be available as well starting tomorrow. So be sure to check that out. Um, We are taking a little bit of a break this month as we're going to PLA. So if anyone is going to the Public Library Association in Portland, please be sure to stop by booth number 1711 and say hello to the TLC family there. And um, otherwise, we'll see you at the end of the month for our next webinar. Um, So that's what we have today. Uh, Melissa and crew, are there any closing thoughts you want to share as we um, download those last brochures and, and grab what we need to for today's webinar? I just want to I want to thank um, our our panelists again, uh, recruiting the staff, and then also our very willing uh, customers, who are just a joy to work with. It's one of the reasons why we love what we do. Um, so, and thank you to everybody who attended. Yes, thank you, everybody. We'll we'll see you next time. Stay safe, and we'll we'll look forward to it in the next webinar. Bye, everybody. <laughs>